Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome, everybody, to Celebrating Act 2 with, with our fabulous uh, love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrica. Michelle, good to see you again today. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you, John? How are you? Good, doing? good. Hi, good to see you. So I have a, a question for today. Uh, you are in a relationship uh, uh, and all of a sudden you find out that your uh, a spouse or partner has a serious illness that uh, is likely to lead to uh, severe uh, uh, disability or, or death in the near term. And uh, you've never faced this before uh, as a relationship where somebody was seriously ill. How do you do this where you can help uh, yourself and your partner maintain some side of, type of normalcy or relationship now that it has significantly changed? Some of the, the, the backdrop of what your, was your life has changed. Can you help us with that? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I really like the way you even asked the question, Art, because there is. It is a new, it's almost like you're going to be navigating a new relationship to some degree because your world is really suddenly shifted. And um, it's important to really acknowledge this new change and look at, wow, this is what's going on. How can we be together in this? How can we support each other the best we can? I mean, both people are going to need support in some way, right? Not just the person who's ailing, but the person who is caring for their spouse or partner. So yeah, it's really good to acknowledge it. And, and, and share openly about what it means and how they are want to proceed, how that couple wants to proceed through it. It's, it's not an easy process. Obviously, there's support available for you know, either person. I mean, of course, there's medical treatment that you know, may or may not be happening. And there's choices around that and that come up. And so, yeah, it's, it's really at first really acknowledging the grief and making space for that and kind of accept the new reality. Well, um, uh, it's kind of interesting in that uh, uh, John and I, uh, uh, I can't speak for John, I'm pretty sure, we both had uh, a, a serious illness, uh, either for ourselves or a spouse. But in all those cases, uh, we thought uh, that, well, this is something we're going to come through and get through and things will be good out the other end. And in fact, in, in our case, in my case, it was, and uh, I don't know whether John, you've experienced that as well. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, getting being in a situation where it's uh, not likely to have a good result is is the one that right. uh, uh, seems to be more difficult. John, have you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, it, there is a tendency, I think, when when we're faced with something like death, um, that it's not a sure it's not a sure thing. I, I don't. I think can, cancer. Right? Lots of cures for cancers or lots oh, of treatments true. for cancers, but. What happens, I think, is typically you want to put on a good face. You want to be positive. You don't want to talk about the, po the, the negative possibility. Well, you could die. We want to talk about it's going to get better. We're going to fight this. So there's, I think there's a tendency to almost ignore the, the, the dire possibility, and that's not necessarily healthy, is it? Right. I would agree with you. I mean, it, it sometimes different people will have a different kind of outlook, you know, more optimistic, less optimistic, more pessimistic, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, and I think it is important. I mean, even just in general, I mean, we're all going to die. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> we're all going <laughs> to die. And so that is even a topic to discuss preemptively, maybe before, you know, before you're in the situation. But if you haven't, it, it, you know, sometimes when we realize that we have less time together, it can make the time we do have way more precious and bring things into focus about what do we really appreciate about each other? How are we going to do, how are we going to navigate, navigate through this together? And how can we still like both support each other? And like, and I think I mentioned that briefly, but kind of like, you know, all of, we all need to be needed. Even the ill uh, partner, you know, wants to feel like, they're needed by their spouse. Their spouse still, you know, not that they can do some of the maybe responsibilities that they were doing before, but there are some ways that there can still be a give and take and um, to, to, you know, plan for that. And also just, there, you know, staying positive, you know, take a, mo you know, take a couple hours a day, whatever. 
we're not going to talk about it today. Today, we're going to have fun and enjoy ourselves and do as much as we can that we used to be able to do. And then also at other times, think about like, how are we going to um, plan for this? Like, what is, what is a good death look like to you or to me? Um, how would you like this to go? How interested are you on, you know, lots of different treatments that, you know, may or may not, you know, be helpful or, you know, we don't know, right? There's a lot of unknowns often in different types of illness, but how are we going to navigate that together? What would you like to be doing? Who do you want us to be with us? Assuming, you know, we're not during a pandemic where being with family and, and loved ones is difficult, but yeah, it's really about having these difficult conversations and, um, and, and sharing your feelings about your fears your no, hopes think, uh, also, and, and your appreciations. Also, one thing uh, I think, and uh, this is our value of us being uh, considerably older than you are. Uh, you're, you're, you're one of our young and friends. Uh, is that uh, it's also perhaps a good time if you don't have a living will, because uh, you can do them online with the, and I, I'm not promoting legal Zoom, although sure. if they want to be our sponsor, please. Uh, uh, I said this because of that. But uh, uh, legal Zoom or there are half a dozen other online uh, inexpensive ways, even if you don't have this way, you make sure that there's a uh, uh, you, you have in writing who you want assets to transfer to, or even if your spouse is going to get everything to just make it easy for them to accumulate everything rather than have to go through probate and hire lawyers. So and it takes Absolutely. maybe you can do it in a, in a day or two. So there, if you haven't done your financial planning already, this is an easy thing to do, probably five, six hundred bucks. And then this is one thing that you can have off uh, uh, your plate. So uh, that's the, uh, one thing that people don't speak about too much. We had one years ago, and then about two or three years ago, uh, we updated it after all the kids were out of college and we, we could take off the list of who's going to raise them <laughs> because right, they were all right. in their 30s. Well, good, good advice. Yeah, and it's, I, I love that. Yeah, it's very important because you basically, ideally, you're kind of trying to make it easier for those left after you pass away and rather than leave them yeah. with kind of a big mess or a, maybe a fight among the kids or whatever. It's so wonderful to be planning that in advance and to ideally let everybody know what, how it's going to go. So you can, yeah. you know, kind of make it smoother. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there are also things called a, like a, Oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say it, the, the emotional aspect of dealing with death, whether it's your death, you, you think you've, you've got a real possibility of dying or your spouse's death is just probably the most difficult conversation you're ever going to have in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I think, um, I think on that somber note, because <laughs> <laughs> we, we like to, we like to leave people laughing. We'd like to leave them. Yeah. You know, really well, upbeat. I mean, I guess I want to say one quick thing about that. I mean, Thanks. basically grief is love. That's what I want to say. And that's, I, I didn't make that up, but basically grief is the price we pay for closeness and love and connection and the joy of being alive and being connected to our, our partner. I mean, so I like to, yeah, if we can hold, like, invite people to hold on to that preciousness and that beauty, that's what we got to experience in this life together. Well, thank you, Michelle. And, um, uh, may our griefs be far away. Appreciate it, Michelle. See you soon. See you soon. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.